Ori i re funo glad tidings to you. I pray that you are feeling awake, aware, and elevated in mind, body, and spirit, wherever you are, and whatever may be happening around you. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. I'm Baba Umar Oluranshe MSA, voice of the MSA, member of the Isoro Traditional Council of Chiefs, Oluwo of the House of Umar, and Baba Lao of Iliawo Orisha. This Ile, this spiritual house, our website, and these video lessons are sanctioned by the Isoro Traditional Council of Chiefs in Ileife, Nigeria. Opo Ire, abundant blessings to our Egbe, our online community of subscribers that's growing daily. Thank you for joining us for another lesson in our video blog series. Remember, as a member of our Egbe, you can support each other's spiritual journey by posting your questions and uplifting comments in the comment section below. You can also email me directly using the link in the description below if you wish to contact me on some personal matter. If you're new to our video lessons, we invite you to click the links below to become a subscriber and member of our Egg Bay. Also, click the notification button to stay up to date and share this resource with your family, friends, associates, and anyone you feel may, be bene may benefit from this wisdom. You never know who is on a journey that this is the answer to what they're looking for. Homage to the one who sends and to those who are sent. Homage to Orisha and Egun. Our topic for this video is the purpose of religion, part two. In part one of this series of posts, I stated, religion is defined as the belief in and worship of a supernatural or superhuman controlling power, especially a personal God or gods. I stated the purpose of any and all religions is to point the devotee in the direction of realizing the nature of this supernatural or superhuman controlling power, especially a personal God or gods, and to understand how we are connected and bound to this God or gods. You might find it helpful to reread part one to recall some of the other things that uh, were stated in that um, video. Another important thing to remember about religion is that it is a system of belief and can be cultural, meaning that it is indicative of an entire culture or society. It can be institutional that is adhered to by members of a certain group within or between certain cultures, or it can be personal, an individual set of practices that is unique to a particular person. The important thing is that regardless of the nature or expanse of the religion, it is nonetheless a system of beliefs. The key word here is belief. Many people would choose to argue this next point, but neither science nor religion can categorically state what is the absolute truth about the nature of creation, the existence and nature of a creator, our place in the creation, or our relationship to the creative force or forces that account for existence. If any 
source were able to, to state the absolute truth, absolute meaning undeniable, then everybody would believe. Everybody would believe the same thing. Everybody, it would be so obvious, so evident, so self-evident that everybody would be forced to accept it, not forced because of some outside influence, but forced because of the logic, the, the um, uh, uh, way in which that information impacts on their own consciousness. Truth is defined as the quality or state of being true. We say he had to accept the truth of her accusation. He did it. He knows he did it. She accuses him of it, or she points out that he did it. He had to accept the truth of her accusation. Truth is that which is true or in accordance with fact or reality. He found out the truth about her. She said that she was from uh, a certain country, a certain city, a certain town, and he found out through one way or another that that's not where she, that she's not from where she said she was from. He found out the truth, the facts about her. Truth is defined as a fact or belief that is accepted as true. The emergence of scientific truth, for example. There aren't any people, I don't think, on the planet that would argue with the existence of gravity. It is a scientific truth. Now, you might want to call it by some other name, but the fact that an apple falls from a tree at 32 feet per second square is a scientific truth. Therefore, regarding religion, the fundamental question is not, what is the truth? Since we can argue about what's the truth and what's not. The fundamental question is, what do you choose to believe or accept as the truth? Two different questions. And this is the reason why I stated what I did in part one of this particular video series. The purpose of all religions is to point the devotee in the direction of realizing the nature of this supernatural or superhuman controlling power especially a personal God or gods, and to understand how we are connected to, bound to this God or gods. And the purpose of all and any religion is to provoke inquiry into the true nature of things and especially into our own true nature. Not just inquiry, but self-inquiry. So inquiring minds want to know. Religion should be pointing us in the direction, should be motivating us to inquire, to reflect upon, to consider, so that we can arrive at what we can accept as being the truth. In the Ifa spiritual tradition, we say in the beginning, there was nothing but the ashe, the black energetic material of the darkness from which all things come, the realm of infinite possibility. And the first thing to emerge from this realm of infinite possibility was sentience. That is, the ashe became self-aware. We call this sentient nature of the ashe Olodumare. And in realizing that the Ashe was the all-pervading reality, Olodumare determined the idea of experiencing the fullness of the realm of infinite possibility, the fullness of itself. That determined idea provoked the creative impulse, which we call Olofidumare, the creative aspect of the Ashe. We, you and I, are manifestations of that creative impulse, and all that has been created is created from, of, and within the Ashe, 
because there is nothing else. Nothing exists outside of the Ashe. Nothing is separate or apart from the Ashe. It is all, it is the all pervading, all inclusive realm of infinite possibility. So it is this understanding that establishes the notions of interrelatedness, meaning allied by nature, by origin, by kinship, interconnectedness, to be meaning, meaningfully or complexly related or joined, interconnected, and interdependent, two or more things whose functions or purpose is incomplete without each other. So interrelatedness, interdependence, inter interconnectedness, these are the fundamental notions that Ifa points us in the direction of. If we want to understand the nature of the universe, if we want to understand our own place in the universe, if we want to understand Ifa, we have to understand these three notions, interrelatedness, interconnectedness, and interdependence. These notions underlie Ifa and all of the indigenous spiritual traditions. Every microbe, every insect, every plant, every tree, every four-legged, every two-legged, including we humans, are from and of the same material, the Ashe, and of the same source, Orisun, the Oro, the Ashe, and our purpose for being is dependent one upon the other. It should be clear then that in the historical evolution of the world's religions, some very important understandings have been lost. Hence, we see so much hatred, prejudice, avarice, divisiveness, bigotry, and ruthlessness in the world today, and the destruction, the devastation of all aspects of the environment and the creatures of Mother Earth, all while the religions of the world and their devotees claim to have and preach the truth. These ideas are for your reflection. You may choose to believe them as truth, or you may choose to consider their significance as metaphors or analogies. The ability to choose what you believe to be true is one of your greatest gifts, and no one, especially not me, should try to constrain your choice. I'm herein offering you food for thought, that's it. What is it about you and me that we experience as permanent and eternal and unchanging? What is it that remains as a witness after all the ever-changing and impermanent aspects of our sense of self is stripped away? Think about it. From day to day, month to month, and year to year, we look in the mirror and see changes in our bodies. Yet, when we say or think I, the I feels the same, unchanging. Our experiences accumulate. Our memory of some aspects of our lives change. Our beliefs change. Our goals change. Our relationships with people change. Our food, clothing, and activity preferences change. Yet, throughout all of those changes, there is that aspect of ourselves that we experience as unchanging, the I. You are not your body. It is constantly changing. You're not sitting in the same body right now that you were when you first sat down to listen to this video. 
Hundreds of thousands of cells have changed in your body just in the period of time that you've been sitting and listening. So which body are you? The one that existed five minutes ago? The one that existed 10 minutes ago? The one that existed 15 minutes ago? The one that will exist five minutes from now? The one that will exist the hour from now? Which body would you be? You're not your body. You're not your mind. It is constantly changing. Thoughts come in, called monkey mind. Thoughts come in, thoughts go out. It's like, you know, just watch the clouds go by. That's what thoughts are like, right? So your mind is constantly changing and you are not your thoughts or your emotions. They too are constantly changing. You're not your religion. It too is subject to change. So who or what is the unchanging aspect of yourself? Who are you? That's what religion should be pointing you to, pointing you in the direction of inquiry to answer that question. Who or what is the unchanging aspect of yourself? Every creature comes into the world with the same name, I, that identifies us and it as members of a singularity, one thing. Singularity is the state, the fact, the quality, the condition of being singular, of or from a single source, a single source with infinite values, infinite expressions. Every creature, regardless of its degree of sentience, has this sense of I. Even within the forming of groups and communities, we maintain the sense of I, me. I, who accepts to consider myself as part of us, a member of we, I do that. For you and me, this sense of I and our level of sentience compels us to seek a knowledge and understanding of the nature of creation, the nature of the creative force, the source underlying creation, and our nature and place within the universal community of created things. It is this wisdom that a religion should be pointing us towards. Unless we are completely blinded or overcome by the hypnosis of social conditioning, we each have a sense that there is more than one aspect or experience of I. There is the experience of I as an ent entity um, that is separate from all other I's in the world. But when we turn down the volume of the world, and turn up the volume of our inner silence, we become aware of a unifying sense of I, one that connects us to everyone and everything else in the universal community of created things. The world, what in Ifa we call the loja, the marketplace, pulls us to pay attention to and to believe that the conditioned I, the identity, the personality to which we have been conditioned is our only and true self. But silent self-inquiry enables us to realize, to experience the unconditioned I, the eternal, primordial, pervasive self that is rooted in and one with the sentience of the first, the one, the original, the eternal, the creator, the source, the all-powerful, the omnipresent, I am that I am. Yes, religion can be profoundly useful, a profoundly useful launching pad for this journey of remembrance. But first, we must realize and remember the purpose of religion and that religion is not an end in and of itself. Having religion is not enough. 
Just like having a goal is not enough. Unless you pursue the goal with patient perseverance and determined action, just having a goal is insufficient to change your life. Having religion without the pursuit of knowledge is not sufficient to change your life. Study, 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 Ifa. Study, study, study the world. Study what's going on around you. Study, study, study yourself and change will come. We'll continue this into a part three on the purpose of religion. Thank you for listening. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hope that you're getting something from these videos. Please leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how you're doing with your, your study and with the information that we're sharing here. And again, invite those who you know, those who you don't know to uh, turn on to this video and video series and uh, grow in the knowledge of Ifa and the knowledge of self. Uh, J. E. Rabi, may the unblemished cloth of Arun Mila continue to uh, clothe us with the wisdom of the here and the hereafter. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Kiolo Dumare Orisha Ate Egun, Fifune Ni. Itona imoye ati opo ire. May Oludumade Orisha and Egun bestow on you guidance, wisdom, and abundant blessings. Ifo Kanbele, peace of mind from Oludumade. Ajo lo, ajo bo. We go out together, we return together. Ashe, ashe, asheo.